In this lesson, I'm going to be going over how to divide a polynomial uh, using the long division and also a shortcut method, which is called synthetic division. And at the end of the video, I'm also going to go over the remainder theorem as a bonus. Let's begin. Here's our uh, long division here. When we're dividing x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12 by x minus 2, the first thing we want to think about is this. What times x will give us the x cubed. So the answer to that is x squared. And once we take that x squared, multiply it to the x, we get x cubed. And then once we take that x squared, multiply it also to the negative 2, we get a negative 2x squared. Next, we're going to be subtracting. So to show that we're subtracting, I'm going to put a minus sign in the front. So if I go x cubed minus x cubed, it's 0. They cancel out. That's why we multiply by x squared in the first place. Next, if we do 3x squared minus a negative 2x squared, so this is where it gets to be a little tricky. Again, it's going to be positive 3 minus a negative 2, which will give us a 5, positive 5x five squared. Next, we're going to bring down the negative 4x. Once again, we want to find out what times x will give us the 5x squared, and that's going to be plus 5x. Again, we take that 5x, multiply it to the x, we get 5x squared, and 5x times negative 2 will give us the negative 10x. Just as before, we're subtracting. We're subtracting the 5x squared minus 10x, from the 5x squared minus 4x, again, 5x squared minus 5x squared, gone. Next, negative 4 minus a negative 10 will be a positive 6x. Okay, so be careful with the signs. And then again, we're going to bring down the negative 12. Again, x times what gives us 6x? And it's going to be positive 6. 6 times x is 6x. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. As before, if we subtract, we get a 0. So when we divide the x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12 by x minus 2, we get x squared plus 5x plus 6. So as you can see, it's not that bad, but Next, I'm going to be showing you the uh, quicker method called the synthetic division. We're going to be using the same question that we did for the long division to do the synthetic division to see the difference. To start, what we're going to do is take that x minus 2, whatever is in the denominator, and we set that equal to 0 and solve for x. Then x equals 2. Of course, x can't be 2 because that would make the denominator 0. However, that's not what we're doing. We're not setting x equals to 2. We're just finding the number to put on the left here for the synthetic division, and which, of course, is going to be the value of x setting the denominator equal to 0. That's all. Then we have a 1 in front of x cubed, and we have a 3 in front of x squared, negative 4 in front of x, and negative 12 by itself. So we're going to take these four numbers and put them right here. Next, take the 1, bring it down, and then what we do is we take that 2 that we put on the left, we multiply to the 1, and we get a 2 right there. And then we always add. That's the important thing here. We add the 3 and the 2, and we get a 5, Again, take the 2, multiply to the 5, giving us a 10. We add up and down, get a 6. And finally, taking that 2, multiplying to the 6, we get a 12, add up and down, and we get a 0. Then, take that 1, 5, and 6, we're going to change it into 1x squared. Notice we started with x cubed. We go 1 less, which will be x squared plus 5x, again we go in order, 2, 1, plus 6. So if we were to do the division, or actually we did it in the long division, 
We had x squared plus 5x plus 6. However, using the synthetic division, it took a lot less time and a lot less work. And as you can see, synthetic division is almost always the preferred method when it comes to dividing polynomials. One thing I want you to see is that the remainder for this one was 0. The question is, what if the remainder is not 0? Then what do you do? Let me show you in the next example. Let's go ahead and divide this polynomial. Uh, and this time, it's going to give us a remainder, as the uh, title suggests. And I'm going to show you what to do with the remainder. First, we set that x minus 3 equals to 0. And we get x equals to 3. Again, I want to emphasize we're not letting x minus 3 equals to 0 in the denominator, which will make the polynomial uh, rational polynomial here undefined. Rather, we're just looking for the number to put here. And to find that number, we take the denominator, set it to 0, and solve for x. Next, as we did before, we got 3, 2, negative 3, and 4. And we're going to put those four numbers right there, like so. Here we go. First, bring down the 3. Next, multiply the 3 to the 3, giving us a 9. And just as before, we're going to add, where we get 11. And then we take that 3, multiply to the 11, we get a 33. Add up and down, we get a 30. And again, take the 3 that we have before, multiply to the 30, and we get a 90. Add up and down, we get a 94. Then our answer is going to be 3 x squared, again, 1 less than the x cubed that started with, plus 11x plus 30. And the main point of this, is, this example is, what do you do with that remainder 94? We take the 94, put it on the top as the numerator, and we use the same divisor, x minus 3 on the bottom, and that's going to be our final answer. So there you have it, folks. I've showed you how to do a long division versus a synthetic division, and also another synthetic division that has a remainder. In my next part of the video, I want to show you how this could be used when it comes to uh, solving questions for remainder theorem. Here we have the function p of x, where it says 2x cubed plus 7x squared plus 2x plus 1. And the question says to find p of 5. To find the p of 5, we will simply take the 5, plug it into the x of the function. What remainder theorem, however, is that we could also use the synthetic division or the long division and divide the function by x minus 5. And the remainder we get will actually equal to p of 5. Here's what I'm talking about. Let me show you using the example. So we take the 5, plug it into the x cubed, x squared, and x, and this is what we get. And if we simplify this, we get a final value of 436. Or, as I mentioned earlier, using the remainder theorem, we're going to be dividing the function by x minus 5. So synthetic division is, again, the way to go. Notice we put a 5 here. Since we're dividing it by x minus 5, we set that equal to 0, and we get x equals to 5. For that reason, we have a positive 5 right there. Or think of it this way. If we're looking for p of 5, we're just going to put a 5 there for synthetic division. And again, we have the 2, the 7, the 2, and the 1 listed here, just as we did before synthetic division. And let's go ahead and finish this up. 2 comes down, 5 times 2 is 10, add it up, up and down, we get 17, 5 times 17 is 85, 2 plus 85 is 87, and 5 times 87 is going to be 435, and add it up and down, we get a 436. And that is our remainder, but at the same time, if you notice, the 436 is the 436 we got when we actually did the p of 5. So p of 5 is going to be 
436, whether you do it the traditional method by plugging in the 5 into the function, or finding the remainder of the function divided by x minus 5. So there you have it, folks. I've done several examples on synthetic division to compare with the long division, and another synthetic division example that has a remainder. And ultimately, I showed you the remainder theorem, how it's used, and I can't say this is always going to be better, but more complicated the function is, the more suitable the synthetic division will be finding the value of a number uh, when you plug it into the function. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, uh, if you haven't, subscribe, hit that like button, and put in a couple of comments. I would appreciate it. Thank you.